Welcome back to the Amateur Extra Element 4 License Exam Study. We're on sub-element 4 Bravo now, so some more of that deep stuff. Which of the following factors most affects the accuracy of a frequency counter? That is going to be your time-based accuracy. If you want to measure how many waveforms happen in a certain amount of time, you want that time to be exact. You don't want it to be too long or too short, or you're going to get a skewed result. What is the significance of voltmeter sensitivity expressed in ohms per volt? That is the full scale rating of the voltmeter multiplied by its ohms per volt rating. That is the input impedance of the voltmeter. So out of these choices, that's the only right answer. The full scale reading of the voltmeter multiplied by its ohms per volt rating is the input impedance of the voltmeter. Now you can see up here I have, have a site pulled up. Analog meters take a little power from the circuit under the test to operate their pointer. And they, ha they are supposed to have a high sensitivity and if they don't, then it's going to apply a large load to what you're testing. So for the digital multimeter, you can see on this page that these have an input impedance of one mega ohm or more, and usually 10 mega ohms because they're using some transistors, some integrated circuits, which have a high input impedance which means that they will not drag down your measurement. So if you compared the, di the digital multimeter measurement across an analog multimeter measurement, you're going to see that there's going to be a slight difference between the two. Which S parameter is equivalent to forward gain? Okay, so we're talking about S parameters on a network a vector network analyzer such as this one and you can see that port 1 is S11 port 2 on this one is S21 so going back the S parameter that is equivalent to forward gain is S21 which is input 2 down here that is the forward gain port 1 S11 is going to be your reverse gain so let's take a look at that, which S parameter represents input port return loss or reflection coefficient equal to your VSWR. So that's not so much the forward gain, that is the reflected power. So that is going to be S11 or S11. And if you go back and look again, port 1 is for the reflected, port 2 is for what passes through and that can show you your loss alrighty so we're moving on down pretty quickly what three test loads are used to calibrate an RF vector network analyzer that's going to be a short circuit an open circuit and 50 ohms and for the nano VNA there's actually one more test and that's the throughput test so if you've ever messed with one of these you can see down just below it, you see the silver one? That is probably the open. The next one to the right looks like it has a pin on it. That's a short. And the one next to that is a little bit bigger. That is most likely the 50 ohm load that you would use to calibrate your nano VNA or your network van uh, <laughs> vector network analyzer. And you would use one of these test leads to do your feed through um, when you calibrate your, your nano VNA. How much power is being absorbed by the load when a directional power meter connected between a transmitter and a terminating load reads 100 watts forward power and 25 watts reflected? Well, your answer is 75 watts, and if you want to memorize that, by all means, memorize that, because it's the only one that I've seen so far. But to give you a visual of how this one works, from your transmitter, you have 100 watts going forward, 
and in the middle your directional watt meter says 100 watts but your load is reflecting 25 watts backwards so it's just a subtraction problem 100 forward minus 25 backwards is 75 watts so if you need to figure that out on your own with your own equipment now you know how to use it what do the subscripts of s parameters represent that is the port or ports at which measurements are made. And that is some sort of standard, and I didn't know that up until about two months ago. Again, if you want to see how, uh, more information about a Nano VNA, I suggest looking up Allen at Tech. That's Whiskey 2 Alpha Echo Whiskey, W2 AEW. Allen has hundreds of great videos. And he has quite a few on the Nano VNA and how you can how you can use it to make measurements. Which of the following can be used to determine the cue of a series tuned circuit? The correct answer is going to be the bandwidth of that circuit's frequency response. So the bandwidth shown right here for this question, you can see that the bandwidth of the left one is really really tiny and it's a sharp a sharp bandwidth it, it it's almost got the brick wall going on that's a high Q the next one has a very large bandwidth it still has that brick wall it rises pretty quick but it is a low Q because of the amount of bandwidth that it covers up which of the following can be measured by a two port vector network analyzer and that can be filter frequency response. Again, I, I have seen a video by quite a few people who have shown filters that they've built, especially the band bass filters. Oh, they're a mess, but filter frequency response. You can use a, a $60 tool if we can do it at home. Question number 10. Which of the following methods measures intermodulation distortion in a single sideband transmitter? The correct answer is modulate the transmitter using two AF signals having non-harmonically related frequencies and observe the RF output with a spectrum analyzer. Oh, that is a tough E right there to go over. I do have a picture. You have your two frequencies that you're being inputted input into your radio through AF. That's your audio in. So you might have a doo doo. Um, those two tones are probably harmonically related, so don't use those. Uh, you, you would probably want to Google what non-harmonically related frequencies you'd want to use. Um, but then you can see that those two frequencies are added in the in that audio input and you get the the uh, differences so one is the frequency two minus frequency one and one is frequency one minus frequency two and that's basically like a mixer then you can see that there are second order and third order intermodul intermodulation distortion and the first one over there is where things could quite be out of band so you want to be careful with um, IMD now would your modern rig need this most likely not would an older rig need this test done probably so and you would use a spectrum analyzer to do that question 11 which of the following can be measured with a vector network analyzer all of these choices are correct you can do input impedance you can do output impedance and you can do a reflection coefficient so these are wonderful tools to have in your tool bag keep it charged up and it's very inexpensive now i'm not sponsored and i'm not putting links to this anywhere uh, so I can freely say get it from where you want to get it and get the model you want to get. But 
These right here have been basically the whole conversation of this whole section. So I'm Robbie, W1RCP. I hope that this has helped you understand Section 4 Bravo quite well. And we'll catch you on 4 Charlie next. Like and subscribe. Rob, W1RCP73.